My name is Dr. Pete Weber. I'm a neurosurgeon. I work here in San Francisco at California Pacific Medical Center. If we've decided that somebody's seizures come from the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe is one of those brain structures that if it's damaged by seizures, it can be removed safely. In this model, the patient's looking this way. His nose would be here, her ear would be here, the top of the head is up here. The temporal lobe is colored yellow, the frontal lobe is colored orange, and the parietal lobe is colored blue in this model. But normally it's a flesh color with red and blue blood vessels coursing over the surface. Our goal with surgery is to remove a part of the temporal lobe, the part that's scarred and causing the seizures. We would do that by gaining access, removing the bone that lies over that area, and then exposing it by cutting open the final thin layer of membrane that covers the brain. Then we'll see this area and we'll record and do some testing to see where there might be important structures and to record the electrical activity. This is all done at the time of surgery. Sometimes during the operation we'll ask that the patients be awake for a short interval of time while we do a mapping procedure. We map the brain to find out where important parts are and to try to save those, to try to keep them from being damaged. We can do surgery on patients while they're awake because the brain doesn't feel anything. The brain doesn't feel touch, doesn't feel pressure, doesn't feel pain. The only thing that feels pain would be the skin and the last layer before the brain, and we can numb those up so that patients feel nothing. And we usually would ask them to be awake only for a short interval of time. And then they'd be asleep for the end of the operation, just like they were asleep for the beginning of the operation. When we remove the temporal lobe, we typically would only remove a portion of it from here to here. It's measured in centimeters, and it may be four to six centimeters on average. On the inside of the temporal lobe, deeper down, after we remove the outer portions, we get into the structures called the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the uncus, and portions of those are usually also removed at the time of surgery. When we're done, there's a space there that fills in with the normal brain water that the brain has all the time, and nothing grows back. We cover it back with the bone that we removed, which is then held in place with titanium plates, usually, and that's very strong. Then we close the skin over that area, and all the scars would normally be behind the hairline, so that when the hair grows back, you can't see that there's been any surgery. There's a question about how much do we remove in a surgery. Each surgery is usually tailored to that individual's type of epilepsy. There are some surgeries where we remove only a very small amount to try to stop the seizures. And there are some surgeries where we need to remove a lot of area of the brain that's causing a seizure. In most cases, a temporal lobectomy, we only remove a few centimeters of the temporal lobe on the outside part and the inside part of the temporal lobe to make the seizures go away. And the success of surgery is not measured by how much you take out, but by the fact that you can remove the part of the brain that's causing the seizures while leaving the good part of the brain behind. Patients often ask, how do you know what's the good part and the bad part of the brain? How do you know what part to remove? We do tests to determine what's the good part of the brain and what's the bad part of the brain. Then we teach them that usually the parts that's causing the seizure is not a very functioning part of the brain anyway. And it's a part that you can do without, without changing the person. So by removing that, you can't really tell that anybody's different, except that they don't have seizures anymore in the vast majority of cases. The surgery itself may last anywhere from four to six hours. Most patients will stay overnight in an intensive care unit. Typically, patients spend two more days in the hospital on average. Some patients, especially those younger and healthier patients, may go home 
even two or three days after the surgery, and some may take a few more days to get back on their feet. After the surgery and after they've returned home, patients are asked to avoid strenuous activities or heavy lifting for about a month, and then the restrictions are lifted. Most patients will ask the question about whether they can get off the medications after a surgery if they're not having seizures. These days we tend to leave people on their medications for a few years even before trying to take them off medications even if they're not having seizures after the surgery. Many patients choose to stay on medications just in case they were going to have a seizure rather than risk having more seizures after a successful surgery. These days we find that most neurologists are educated about the idea of surgery for epilepsy. Many years ago that may not have been true. We still meet people who are not strong believers in the idea most of the people I work with are familiar and enthusiastic about the option of surgery for some people with epilepsy. In a perfect world, everybody would know everything there is to know about epilepsy and epilepsy surgery. And epilepsy surgery plays a big role in the treatment of patients who are not getting better with medications. But the truth is more that we have to teach a lot of people about this option of surgery in order to continue to pass the message along that there is a good option in surgery for some people with epilepsy.